everyone and welcome back to Art a la carte and this is part two of my drawing my clockwork fox picture and the first one I did I had the sketch so now I want to show you how I took and transferred that sketch over onto my regular paper. So the first thing I did was take a photo of it with my little phone. It doesn't have to be an awesome uh, camera or anything I just want a uh, kind of an idea of the image. Then I printed that off of my computer at the size that I wanted my piece to be. So I enlarged the picture and then printed it off. Now I'm using a technique that I showed you in my art hack video. I made my own personal transfer paper. So if you want to see how I did that, I'll put a link to that in the description box below. And then I simply transferred that over to the paper. Now the thing is, is when you're transferring it over to the paper, you want to make sure that your lines are not too hard because you don't want to crease your pic your picture but you want the image to show through just a simple outline of what your image looks like you're not going for detail now i'm going to go back with my mechanical pencil because i can get a really fine line and i'm going to go in and start adding in my hyper detail i'm going to figure out how i want the fur to look and all the little intricate details i want to figure this all out before i start inking things in you want your picture to be exactly the way you want it before you ink it in because obviously you can't go back in and you know erase your ink and all that so make sure that your pencil sketching is is the way you want it. I After I did this I did let it rest for a little bit, came back to it and looked at it, fixed anything that I wanted to um, before I decided to uh, continue on with the inking process. This is probably the most tedious part of the whole painting. Um, and I also wanted to be careful that I didn't smudge my uh, paper, the lead. So you'll see a little yellow piece of paper that I put underneath my hand. It's a little hand guard. Also, if you're going to be putting a lot of work on your picture, you're going to want to limit as much contact to your piece as you can with your hands. Your hands have oil and dirt, and that's going to affect how the watercolors are going to lay on your paper, or even colored pencils are going to lay just a little bit differently. So you want to protect your paper as much as possible. So as you can see, I'm putting a lot of detail, a lot of thought. I added a lot more things to the chains. I wanted some things that people could look at and go, oh, that symbolizes something. So after I had everything the way that I wanted it, I started the inking process. And I decided instead of black ink that I would use kind of a brown ink and decided to ink that in with kind of a sepia color. After I finished inking in the like mechanical pieces like the chain and the cogs and the key and all that, I decided I wasn't going to ink in the whole piece. I just wanted those things to be inked in but not the actual fox. When you outline something it automatically makes it a little bit more cartoony and as I was working on this piece it was moving more from a cartoony illustration to more of a realistic illustration. So I decided that I wanted the fox to not be outlined and it would give it a little bit more a sense of realism. Now originally I wanted to do most of this with color pencil but I decided that I wanted to to put down the base of watercolor. And the reason I wanted watercolor as a base then I could begin to build in my shadows and my highlights with you know color pencils after that. But I had so much fun putting watercolor on this piece that I ended up doing I think almost all of it with watercolor. I don't think I even went back with color pencils and did any highlighting or shadowing or anything like that. I think it's strictly just watercolor and ink. Um, so yeah, things can, you can have an idea of what you want your picture to look like and how you're going to do it. And then as you progress along, it might change drastically. This picture went through so many different phases of what I wanted it to be. I love how it turned out, but it's totally not what I'd first started out in my mind. I wanted a really simple graphic um, illustration of this that I could, you know, do, you know, whatever with. I don't know what I wanted to do with it. I was just had an idea in my head and just kept growing and growing. That's the fun of art is that a lot of times it's kind of like this little bit of a partnership as you begin to create. If you allow your artwork to create with you, um, you know, kind of get some fun pieces. This also is one of the longest I've ever worked on a piece. Generally, when I start to work on a piece, I commit to work on it start to finish and only taking small breaks to let you know paint set or dry and in those breaks I mean I'm getting food or using the restroom or something like that but I will try to you know do a piece within a day or two if it's a larger piece or a commission piece and I need to take my time I might work on it for one day let it rest for a couple of days then go back to it and then work on it another day 
Um, but this piece was not a commission. It was just a sketch of my head. And I think, well, it's still not done yet. I'm still working on the background. Um, but part, the phase one is done. And I think phase one took me about four days. So all of these clips that you see here are kind of a collaboration of just the four day experience. So you'll see that I'll kind of be one way and then all of a sudden jump ahead, you know, having a lot of work done to it. And that's because I could not possibly record the entire session. That would be totally insane. So I just kind of wanted to give you a little bit of an idea of some of the different processes. I tried to record as, as much as I could, um, but there are a little bit of gaps where I didn't record things. But just a lot of time and effort and um, thinking about it. And yeah, I didn't rush it. I didn't want to rush this piece just so I could have it finished. That was the big thing as I was learning to be an artist is I would rush my art so much. I would just you know want to see it what it was done and and go, yeah, I could put, you know, another day or two of work in here. Or I could just really skip that step and just have it finished. And I see that on a lot of beginning artists as well when they're coloring something, instead of really getting in there with their color pencils and filling that color, that space in with some nice dark color, you just go over it really quickly and yeah, it's it's blue, but you know the color is not all the way even through there and stuff. So I encourage you as an artist, if you want to um, get better, that you just put in the that time that you need to make the piece super awesome. finished. Um, yeah, I really, really love this piece. Right now, this piece, the way it is now, is available on my Red Bubble shop. You can buy prints of it, cards, stickers, t-shirts, bags, skirts, scarves, all sorts of fun things, phone cases, all of that. I am going to continue working on the background. I will record that as well and put a bay part three of what was I thinking with this. So yeah, thank you guys for hanging out with me during these video series. If you're not a subscriber, make sure to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on any future videos. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. That is so encouraging to me. I love um, knowing that you guys like the content that I'm creating and those thumb, that thumbs up button really helps me to know that. So, well, thank you guys for hanging out with me and until next time, God bless you guys and we'll see you later. Bye-bye.